Hi everyone, welcome to part two of this Q&A video from last month. Um, I am recording and going to put out this video early because I'm going on holiday. Uh, we're having a staycation in Gloucester and then we're going to Wales for a bit. So it's going to be lovely, but what that means is I'll miss the time when I regularly upload. So I'm uploading a little bit early this month. Um, if you guys have any questions, I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as I can. I hope you all are having a great holiday and enjoy the next part of this video. What would you say are the easiest and the hardest core modules? Like a personal opinion one I know, but like going in I want to know what to look out for. <laughs> okay, so I always stand by the fact that I think algebra is the easiest kind of cop-out way to get through your math degree. <laughs> I but love algebra. it's still math, it's still math. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think the hardest things are maybe multivariable calculus so mm -hmm. that is the next module from geometry and motion which i know you mentioned was maybe the hardest first year yeah first year geometry and motion is i think the the one that was like the worst for me yeah and i think something else that i found difficult in first year was analysis mm -hmm. but i thought in second year that it was actually Okay. Decent. It wasn't easy. Mm. It's not like algebra, but it, it wasn't multivariable calculus either. Mm. Um, but yeah, uh, also, I don't know if you've heard about this, I don't want to scare you, oh, but no. we have second year essay. Yes, I've seen that. I don't, I'm actually quite confused as to what that means because we have very little like experience with mathematical essays. So, how, what? Just quickly, like, what what is that like? What do you pick your own topic? Do they give you a topic? How do you write a mathematical essay? So honestly, I still don't know how to write a mathematical <laughs> essay. <laughs> so I've handed my thing in now. But you kind of pick what you want to do. Mm -hmm. Then you have to get it approved by your tutor mm -hmm. to make sure that there is enough maths in it. And then you just kind of write. And it's not a dissertation where you have to kind of make your own thing and produce something. Mm -hmm. It is like a research project. Okay. So it's more reading maths literature and then kind of learning the style and stuff to get you prepared for your dissertation. Okay. So preparing for that a good thing would be like reading a lot of like textbooks or like publication like maths publications kind of getting that sense of yeah okay. i don't know if you've read any maths journals or stuff like that a couple but um in first year i was just very focused on like passing the year i didn't yeah. have a lot of time to kind of go above and beyond so i guess that's like a summer a summer activity i can just read more maths <laughs> yeah exactly that should help you and i think also they do tell you to start thinking about your topic over the summer mm -hmm. but you don't have to um you do get two terms to write this thing in mm -hmm. and what i did actually was when i went home after term one i was like i'm i finished i finished everything for term one in term one mm -hmm. i was really on top of things so then that christmas i just sat down and wrote my whole essay mm -hmm. because it's difficult at least for me to do something like that alongside doing lectures because it's like you have to set aside time to do it yeah and it's, it's a lot it is a lot and it is like 12 pages of maths and you do have to learn how to use later if you haven't already mm -hmm. and stuff like that so it's i think that also was hard but not hard in the sense that the maths was hard mm -hmm. it was hard in the sense that this is a module where you get little guidance on what you need to do mm -hmm. and very little kind of checkups on how you're doing or your progress or anything like that. I mean, the only deadline we have was submission of a title. What was your title? What did you do yours on? I did mine on game theory, but evolutionary game theory. Oh, okay. I, I want to take like a game theory uh, module next year, so. Is it the stats one? Yes. 
<laughs> I, I also wanted to take that module. Fun story. So yeah, I I I pick it. I'm like, oh, I want to do game theory this yeah, year. This it is looks gonna be exciting. cool. It's going to be fun. And I did economics in one A, which is also game theory. Okay. And I sit down. I go on the Moodle page. No joke. There was twelve lectures for one week. And I click on the lectures, and it's just him talking over the lecture notes. And I was like, I know some people are capable, mm -hmm. but I'm not capable. I mean, <laughs> maximum five lectures per module, please. <laughs> I, I could not cope, so I dropped That's it. It's gonna be a lot. I mean, I, from the content, it mm. seemed like it at least, it's not too hard, it is just game theory. Mm. But I just, I can't, I can't learn like that, I couldn't do it. <laughs> I mean, it's fair enough, like, if you go and, like, teach yourself yeah. this stuff, to be fair. I mean, like, because I I wanted to take a philosophy module uh, this year, but I couldn't. So I just ended up, like, I just now said to the module leader, like, Hi, the Moodle is there. Can I just read through it? Yeah. So, like, with something like that, I guess if it's a harder module, I'll probably just end up doing the same next summer, where... I'm just kind of teaching myself a module now, so... Yeah, that would be cool. See how it works out. Maybe not like five lectures a week, maybe I'll like spread it over the entirety of the summer holidays, but Yeah. <laughs> we'll, we'll see how it ends up. Yeah, you do have quite a long summer holiday at uni, mm -hmm. so that is a good way to spend your time, actually. I feel very smart about it. So. Yeah, I, I'm impressed, actually. I don't... I... <laughs> when I go for holiday, even Christmas or Easter, I refuse to do anything. <laughs> but honestly, it felt like... It feels like you're just... Ca like, holidays was my time to catch up, and I'm expecting that to be the same, like, in second year, like... Because I, I do fall behind quite easily, so... I was expecting to have to kind of do that in second year as well. I probably should. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have um, any like super secret study tips, anything that I shouldn't, I should be doing but I'm not doing already? Okay, so I think the biggest one is, I know we've been talking a lot about like lectures being too much. Yeah. Don't be afraid to make a tactical judgement to skip the last two weeks of lectures. That is fine, especially mm. if your exam is, uh, it's got optional questions, mm -hmm. so you pick two questions from three questions. The best That's kind of exam paper. Exactly. And usually that final question that you can pick from is that later content. Mm -hmm. And I just think the later content is always the hardest part of the module. Mm -hmm. And if you haven't done it already, you might as well focus on the earlier parts. And then just don't do that question. <laughs> just <laughs> That works out, yeah. So that is one thing, and actually that is not just me saying it, my tutor said it to me. Okay. So it's legitimate, it's a way to do it, and people have done it successfully. Mm -hmm. And hopefully I've done it successfully, because that's how I did my exams this year. <laughs> I think then, yeah, like, if you, if you focus on the bits that you know, like, it's just... It's just gonna work out better. Yeah, exactly. And also for exam practice, I'd say try not to get overwhelmed by doing everything. Mm -hmm. Just make sure you are able to understand the methods of things or mm -hmm. understand the main theorems. And the way I revised actually was going through, we had weekly kind of PDFs of questions. Mm -hmm. And I actually, I didn't even do all of them. I looked through them and you could kind of see a common theme of this theorem is used a lot or, or mm -hmm. this topic is really important or you need to know this method. And then make a list and then that should be where you start your revision. Yeah. Don't just try and sit through and read all the notes and understand all the notes mm -hmm. because at the end of the day, your exam isn't gonna ask you, did you read the notes? It's gonna ask you, can you apply these things? Mm -hmm. And it's absolutely okay to be tactical with how you do exams mm -hmm. and not waste your time doing everything when you know this comes up a lot or that comes up a lot. Just yeah. do those things then and make sure you understand those things. Yeah, like starting with kind of the stuff that I know and then working outwards from there. I mean, like I know at A-level a lot, they were kind of just like, you don't have to do the questions in order. Everyone still did the questions in order. Yeah. But like just reading through an exam paper and being like, well, I know, I know, I know how to use this theorem, so I'm just gonna go straight to that. Like stuff like that, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And also, don't be afraid to skip questions and exams. Yeah. 
because at least this year you will run out of time and especially if you spend ages kind of thinking about how to do one question that you don't know how to do you could easily miss out on you know a whole half a question because you haven't looked at it and you spent too long looking at a question you didn't know how to do yeah so yeah, use your time wisely as well. Okay, priorities, yeah. Yeah. Um, I guess then, just as another general question, is there anything massively different from first year that you know I should absolutely know about? Hmm. Uh, that's a tricky question actually, because obviously COVID is massively different, and yep. that's what defines Online my learning. second year. Exactly. Yeah. But then obviously you've come in with COVID, so. Yes your second year might be massively different in that you end up going to lectures and actually going to a lecture for the first time would be so exciting what yeah. could i kind of expect from like you know these big lectures with like hundreds of people in or whatever what you know what's that experience like you know what it feels like a team's lecture in the sense that you will not want to put your hand up you will not want to you, you don't want your camera on you don't want to unmute yeah. yourself you just want to sit there do the lecture and go home and I think the biggest thing is the pace of the lectures mm -hmm. will be slower um, okay. or at least it depends on how your lecturers have been doing their online lectures obviously but you have to realise that now the lecturers are also writing mm -hmm. so you kind of have that advantage of they need to write out everything on a blackboard and then when the blackboards become full they need to wipe the blackboards mm -hmm. so you do end up getting kind of breathing time Okay. And also lectures won't run over because, you know, once your lecture's finished, someone else is trying to come in. Mm -hmm. So you won't have lectures that are an hour and a half long. Oh we had so many lecturers this year who just, if they had a bit more, they were like, well, we'll just stick around. Yeah. Yeah. Um, actually, I think one thing that people get worried about with lectures is that you won't get to ask questions and I think that's something that was made very easy by being online because mm -hmm. obviously we had that kind of Q&A yeah, part the, of our lectures. Yeah, the little thing we type in, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so actually, obviously, I don't think many people will have the courage to stick their hand up and be like, I've got a question or I don't understand. But what you can do is when you're leaving the lecture hall, mm -hmm. actually you can talk to the lecturer. Okay. Um, people just go up to them and ask questions and I often see the lecturer kind of drawing on the blackboard mm -hmm. once the lecture's over explaining stuff to someone. So that is a way of asking questions. But again, I think asking questions is the biggest thing that mm -hmm. you probably might not get, but then we have office hours, which is what office hours are for. Okay. Yeah, I didn't really like make use of a lot of the office hours this year because I felt like a lot of the stuff, if I had questions, like someone else already asked those questions in lectures, so I didn't really like feel that need to. But I guess like it's a useful thing that I'm gonna like try and use more. I think next year, mm -hmm. if we do have not online lectures, yeah. um, then that will be something where you actually realise that this is really important because mm. I don't think many people feel comfortable with shouting out in lectures. It's, it takes a certain kind of like person I feel like to ask questions. You also end up knowing the people who shout out in the lectures, then mm -hmm. they become famous, you know? <laughs> it's like, oh yeah, I know that girl. She's the one who always puts her hand up in the lectures. <laughs> yeah. that's, maybe that's a goal. Maybe I'm going to become that person. Maybe yeah. that'll be me. Yeah, we can hope. I, every time I think about this, I think of this one girl in our year, mm -hmm. and we had differential equations with Dave Wood, who's my tutor. You have Dave Wood as a tutor? Yes, I do. Oh my god, Dave! <laughs> He's one of my favourites. That's great. Um, does he do maths? Is not a spectator sport. Yeah. <laughs> So there was this one girl in our uh, year who always used to go woo woo at the end of that <laughs> and and then she became famous after that. Everyone knows her name and she ended up getting voted like, um, I can't remember what position it was for but she got a role in Warwick Mass Society <laughs> because she's just famous now from shouting out. <laughs> a true icon. <laughs> <laughs> For real. <laughs> okay. Um... Final question then, is there anything that surprised you about second year? Oh, 
I think the most surprising thing was how kind of the same it felt. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, obviously, apart from the online learning and stuff like yeah. that, the lectures were the same kind of style, mm -hmm. the lecturers were the same kind of people, the assignments were the same. It, they don't expect more than they expected last year. Mm -hmm. It's just the content's harder. And I think that surprised me because I thought that maybe in second year you get even more assignments and you get yeah. kind of the lecturers suddenly step back even more and they don't explain things at all and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But that didn't happen. Okay. They were all kind of very much the same support and the same expectations mm -hmm. were given and it just was that the content was harder, which is why it's second year, I guess. Yeah, that, that makes sense. And I guess that's reassuring that, like, as you said, it's not just like suddenly they're like, well, you're, you, you're all like, you know what's happening now, you're big mathematicians, you can go <laughs> off and do it. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. So I think that wraps it up then. Yeah. Uh, thank you for doing this video with me and I will see you guys next time. <laughs>